to a brand new episode, brand new starts, and an amazing day, of course. You're welcome to the Chelsea Zay Show. Yeah, my name is Chelsea Zay. Now, this particular episode, we'll take a look at a findings by an amazing person from the Ghana Health Service. His name is Obed Bangdome. He's probably known as the Tadi Mayor. He actually went, um, he had a research or he had a trip to BBNE to actually go and study their healthcare system. And he came through with a finding which he turned it into a book titled The Study on Delivery Care System in Bibiani and Hirasu in the Bekwai district here in the Western region. You know, we always record high incidence of maternal death. Every day, we have over 800 pregnant women losing their lives. This is a very sad story or a very sad news and we don't have to curtail it. We need to help save the lives of our pregnant mothers and help them come home with their babies. And so, on the dialogue session, we talk more about the findings from Obed's latest book, which was launched recently. Hi Obed, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Okay, so upon all the parts that you could have visited, why BBNE? Um, first of all, BBNE was where I was working until I was posted to Takrande. So I had access to their health data at the, mm -hmm. as at the time this book writing started. So looking at their data, between 2008 and 2013, I saw that they were recording some numbers of maternal mortalities and I needed to go to the community to find out, you know, some of the reasons that actually contribute to these deaths in the communities. So while we, while, whilst you were going there, did you have it at the back of your mind that you want to write a book from it or you just you were just doing your job? No, I, if you carry out a research, at the end of the day you are supposed to write the findings and then publish it. But my main idea was not to get it into a printed book. Mm -hmm. um, it was just to get it in a soft copy and share the findings with those who really need to know about what is happening in the community but it, it wasn't in my plans to put it into a book like this where everybody can buy a copy that wasn't the initial plan mm. yeah now let's get straight to the book itself what were your findings when you went to the beginning so i visited seven communities in two sub districts per the health administration they divide the district into various sub-districts. Bibini has about five sub-districts. So I went to Chirano sub-district, and then I went to Bekwai sub-district. I found out that five reasons account for the continuous usage of traditional birth attendants. These are people who have not had any you know, training to be midwives, but they have practiced over the years, and they have that skills. So first on the list for usage of TBA from my research was economic reasons. Mm. The people I talked to, looking at their background, they are peasant farmers who do not have any high income. So for them, cost of delivery with a skilled attendant, the trained midwife, was high. The midwives were asking for as much as six geisha soap, detol, uh, Macintosh, and what have you. But the TBA, we just not request for anything. After successful delivery, then the TBA would take maybe a bottle of palm oil. So for them it a was... A bottle of palm oil as compared to six geisha, yes. eggs and coal. And the, the demand by the TBA was postpaid. Hmm. But the hospital is a prepaid. You pay before you are attended to. You must have the items before you are accepted into the labor world. But the TBA would accept you even if you don't have the items. So after a successful delivery, maybe after three months, then from your own volition, you take these items to just say thank you. Mm -hmm. And another reason had to do with, um, for the women I spoke to, they said that the labor position, which is adopted by the hospital, was inappropriate. If somebody was in labor and they go to the hospital, to lie down, yes, the, the they call it the supine or the lithotomy position. Oh. For them, it was not appropriate. They preferred to sit on the bucket and deliver. 
So maybe which the TBA were very very comfortable with. Yes, and the TBA, unlike the trained midwife, would permit you to choose your kind of delivery position. So if you want to lie in the supine position, the TBA would allow it. But for the mothers I spoke to at the hospital, you are not given the option to choose the position that you you, you want to deliver in. But the TBA in. always gave them the position, the position that they want. Yes, the TBA will let you choose which style you want to deliver in. And another position has to do with the time labor set in. Some of the women said they were prepared to deliver at the hospital, but labor normally set in at night. And access to the health facility was problematic. This was coupled with the fact that they were living in communities which um, transport system was very poor, the road network was not good, so there are few cars there. And the time that it would take for the husband and the family members to go and negotiate with the driver for the car to be released, by the time these negotiations would be done, the woman had already delivered. Okay. Or probably she would choose to deliver with a TBA other than just wasting um, time. Another reason had to do with inappropriate attitude of health staff. On countless occasions, a lot of the women listed that they found the attitude of the trained midwife to be inappropriate. Um, a woman said she went there and she was insulted. Um, she asked them, insulted? Yes, the, she was um, told, you know, that she has no knowledge about delivery. She apparently went there in labor and told the nurse that the baby was coming, the midwife that the baby was coming. And the midwife said, who told you the baby was coming? If, if the baby is coming, we'll let you know. Wow. And she found that to be inappropriate. And um, they also yell at the mothers for coming late. And in order to skip all these, you know, um, yellings and insults, they prefer it is better to go to the TBA because the TBA won't insult you if you come at night. The TBA won't say harsh words to you if you come at any time. And the other reason was the fear of caesarean section. The midwives in my interview, I found out, were using caesarean section as a strategy to get some mothers to push. Oh, so if we want you to push, you go like, if you don't push, you're taking you to theater. Yes. And that alone was a way to push them away. Yes, because um, if you are telling somebody that the theater is a bad you know, place to be, then they don't want to undergo the CS operation. So the use of that strategy to get mother to push was rather scaring and pushing them away from the health facility. Okay. So what do you think is the way forward? Do we have to, you know, um, probably give special training to our midwives again so that they can go to the various homes and help them deliver their babies instead of always allowing the pregnant woman to come um, to the hospital to deliver? Yes, I think um, aside the formal training that they received during their three years stay in school, maybe every quarter of the year we should organize some form of training with attention on interpersonal relationship. I found out that a lot of these midwife and young women who practically have not delivered before, mm -hmm. so in code, they are clueless about what it takes to have a baby in your womb and then practically what it feels like when your baby is coming out. They don't have the practical knowledge about it, as in they have not experienced it before. So if a woman is yelling, they don't know they what it idea. feels like. Then again, would you say that before anybody becomes a, a midwife, or a certified midwife, then the person should have probably given birth to one or two, gone through the experience <laughs> to, to know how it feels like before you know the person is being given that certificate. Would that be out of place? That would be difficult because even with the current you know um, criteria for selection, the midwife to um, pregnant women ratio is not anything good to write home about. So to add this to the criteria will mean that um, we we'll end up having few midwives in the system. What I think we should do, we are not there yet, and that is not a better way to go. It will be even in a form of discrimination. But I think we can train people to have an idea that, look, when a woman is in labor, she's a different person. And whatever that she's doing, you do your best to assist 
that person. And I also think another strategy we can adopt is if the health facilities are not buying the antiseptic, the disinfectant and what have you, the soaps, maybe there should be a policy to let them know in the absence of these items, this is what and what you are supposed to request. You don't ask for X. How can a midwife be asking for X from pregnant women? Wow. If we leave the space blank, it, they will request for anything. But maybe we should standardize it. These are the items every pregnant woman is supposed to bring to the hospital when labor setting. Mm -hmm. Rather than giving them the lasty to every facility and the items they request for. I think we should look at that also. We cannot do away with TBAs. Um, WHO is saying we should do away with TBAs, but we don't have enough midwives. Let's go back to our old system where we we're providing training for them, equipping them to conduct clean delivery so that when we get enough midwives, we can ask them to play the liaison role the WHO is saying. Until then, if we do our TVs, I think we are rather going to record more maternal mortalities. Okay. So all that and more will be found when you get a copy of this book, Qualitative Study on Delivery Care Services in Bibiani and Miaso Bekwai districts here in the Western region. So Obed, where can we get some of these books to buy? For now, it's, it's being sold online. Um, it's on Amazon, it's on eBay. If you go to the Lambert Publishing Academy website, you can also have it. All that you have to do is to type the name of the book, Qualitative Study on Delivery Care Services in Bibini Around to be quiet on Google, and then the book will pop up for you. It's currently selling at $21.9. Yes, um, and that is inclusive with um, shipping and then all the other costs that will make it arrive here in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Robert. Thank you Thank too you. for having me. It's high time you and I put our hands together to help save our pregnant mothers and their babies. Let's support the mothers and babies to always survive. It can happen to you. It can happen to me. And our star of the week, obviously, you cannot write this book and not be my star of the week. He needs no introduction. We already had a dialogue with him. His name is Obed Bandem. Let's find out more. So my full name is Obed Bandome Ofori and uh, I come from a family of three. My dad is late and my mom took care of us after he died. I mean I was in stage two when my dad passed away. And um, I went to SHS at a San Senior High School. At San Senior High School, and then from there I went to Kintampo College of Health. I did diploma in disease control. After that, I did my national service, and uh, I was the regional NASPA president for Bronga Hafu. And then currently, I was a municipal NASPA president also for Wenchi Municipal. From there, I worked in Bibiani, I've worked at uh, Bibiani Health Directorate as a disease control officer, I've worked at um, Imbronga Hafu region and currently I'm stationed at the Regional Public Health Division as a disease control officer and uh, I love to also use my leisure time to do blogging so I think that's a little bit about myself. I feel surprised to hear that people think I'm controversial, but I know I am not. So personally, I don't know why people see me that way, but that is their opinion. And they have a right to their opinion, but I vehemently, uh, vehemently disagree with them. Yes, I'm the unofficial me of Teddy. I'm young in town, but I know places that People who claim they've lived here a thousand years don't know. I mean, when it comes to program, there's no program in town that you will not find me there. There's no program in town that I am not aware of. And I know all the influential people in town, so that makes me the mayor of Takradi. I don't have an idea. Black and blue. Black and blue, black and blue. Those are primary 
colors and secondary colors. So it's been a long time, Charlie. This thing minus 2 is 14 plus 2 minus 4. That is. <laughs> Who is the president? Wow, this. <laughs> no, no, no. I, wait, wait, wait. Uh, you know, you know, you know, I had. A in commas and elective maths. I'm very good in maths, but I. I <laughs> What's the capital of the <laughs> I I don't know. I don't know. There's no fault in Takrade. When I was interviewed on Joy FM, the. PM Express show and later after the interview um, I was called by my national service director that I had said things that the executive director of NSS at that time was not happy and my boss actually said harsh stuff to me that day I was quite disappointed I even wanted to resign as president I think yeah I'll look myself in the mirror how it looks to have a breast on. Yes, is this woman, Professor um, Ateidu? I watched her interview and she said something that I thought it was time for me to put what I have into writing. She said that, look, whatever comes to your mind, you have to put it into writing to inspire others. So from that day, I started writing my opinions to share with other people. I went to the seminary and I realized uh, what, I, you know, we were taught some stuff about the Bible and then uh, I made the conclusion that, look, that's not the place for me. So I had to leave and come back to my Ghana Health Service. Yeah. I do woman you should be Brilliant. For me, I look at what you have in your head first. It's not about looks. I mean, I don't want to marry somebody that when you give birth to your children will not be shark in class. So I'm looking for somebody who would be able to, you know, produce offspring who, who will be shark. So it's not about the looks, but to give you quality children, sure. So you should have something in your mind. I am not, but I believe that um, if I have an opinion to a subject, I should be allowed to express it. Doing that, respecting other people's view. What I believe is that until you're able to prove contrary to what I believe in, I will not accept what you are telling me. Give me all the facts that will make me change my mind. Other than that, Hey, what you are telling me is just your own version and I'm not forced to believe in it. For now, I wouldn't say I'm dating. Uh, yeah, I'm not dating. But once in a while, I mean, I have sex. No, I'm not an atheist. Maybe, maybe, I think I'm agnostic. Agnostic are people who are like, maybe there is a certain word, maybe there is not, uh, but there is not enough evidence to disprove that there is no second world, or there is no enough evidence to prove that there is. So maybe there is, maybe there is not. So I'm caught up in between, you understand? I go to church, I am from church coming. I, I paid my tithes today. No, I believe in, no, but you can't live in this society and uh, say you can't go to church. I mean, my mom, because I just told you why I go to church, because I believe maybe there is a second world. So why, if I have the time to go to church, why should I not go? And then maybe if there's a second world and then Jesus comes, maybe he will consider me other than of course, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe that um, maybe he'll come back one day, sure. 
He calls himself the mayor of Tapari, and I know you know it by now because he's very, very controversial. I hope you now know who he is, everything that he's done so far to get to where he is now and why he calls himself the Tardy Mayor. You know, on our next segment, Snowbee actually had a date with Adina. The two of them cooked up something special. And it is the latest banger, you know. It's titled Nadu. Snowbee featuring Adina Thembi, the ever sensational Adina Thembi. And our homeboy, Snowbee, Hitmaker Season 3, first runner up. The video was shot at Francis Lodge, and of course, it has Snowbee in there, it has Adina in there. Yours truly was behind the scene. If you flash, if you kind of have the chance of watching the video, I think you're watching right now. And so, let's go straight to watch the video. We go to live to tell one our story. Say, I go to inject into you my love So baby, oh yeah, take oh, I give you my all Stick like a glue I go be your waiter I go to serve you, girl, I be your waiter Wherever you go, go, I be your sailor Sailor, I be your sailor In your jail, girl, I go be your jailer Can I be, you know, say, man, a real boy I go to protect you, girl, man, a soldier Soldier Cause I they love you, not do the way you the work out the few nadu Nadu My baby don't find you Nadu Nadu My baby super tight to you Nadu Nadu Say we go fly like a kite to you Nadu Nadu I don't know what you're doing to me I like the way that you give it to me They say make I go but I can't go I'll be your Ghana at your last go be canzo I don't know what you're doing to me If you are getting married this year, or if you are getting married any moment from now, this is a total banger that you need to add to your playlist for your ceremony. If you want to win that special person's heart, this is the preferred song for you to use. Now do Snowy featuring Adina is definitely a show banger. My name is Chelsea Say. Thank you so much for staying tuned to this week's episode of the Chelsea Say Show. And know that it's not by class, it's definitely by Christ. Cause I love you now.